Hey everybody, it's Elisa with Momtastic Life and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another baking video. So today's bake with me is going to be something that has been sort of trendy over this um, uh, stay at home period with COVID and it's not bread. It is not sourdough bread. I did not make a sourdough starter. I have no idea what to do with the sourdough starter. So it is not that. But the other thing that I noticed that was trending is the Doubletree Hotel chocolate chip cookies. Now, this wouldn't have been my first choice, honestly, because I'm not a fan of nuts in my food or in my baked goods, but I was taking a walk in the neighborhood like I do every day, and I ran into my neighbor, who is a good friend of mine, and um, she was telling me that she had been to the market and bought all the things to make these cookies. She really wanted to try the Double Tree cookies, but had just come to the realization that it wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> you know, so she had all the ingredients and what, it wasn't gonna happen for her. So she actually gave me a ginormous tub of oatmeal because these require oatmeal because she knows I love to bake and I would make use of it. So. These cookies are for my friend April, who inspired me to actually give it a whirl, and she will be receiving the goods from this. So April, this is for you. This is all your fault. And um, hopefully they come out great. Um, they always look good. I always take a couple bites when I check into a double tree. Not, not that that is so often, believe me, people. But um, I, I, you know, I'm just not a, a fan of the nuts in the food and I want to make them to recipe. So I'll probably pull out a couple and make them without nuts and then do the rest as uh, the recipe calls for. Anyway, let's flip around, take a look at our ingredients and get to bacon these fantastic cookies. Okay, so here we have a quick overview of our ingredients. is that for a cookie? Holy crow, we'll start here. This is a lemon and these cookies require a small amount of lemon juice, which I have never ever seen in a chocolate chip cookie. So this may, this may be the secret ingredient. I don't know, but it does require some lemon juice. So we have that. Uh, vanilla, walnut halves and pieces, which we will chop down to make smaller. Nestle Toll House Semi-Sweet Morsels, the recipe specifically called for Nestle. Now, my personal feelings are I prefer Hershey chips. I don't know why. I can taste the difference, even though they're both semi-sweet. Um, but I'm a Hershey girl all the way. But it said Nestle, so we're going to go with Nestle. And we know that the ultimate result is delicious, so I don't see that this will be bad. It's just not always my first choice. All right, let's come back around and we have some cinnamon, two eggs and two full sticks of butter. And this has been sitting out on the counter for an hour or two. It's pretty warm out here today, so it's, it's fairly soft. Some baking soda and I have two containers here because one is perilously close to running out. Salt, brown sugar, Oats, thank you, April, uh, white sugar, and flour. And that is about gone, so I have my backup bag of flour here. And that's everything. So we'll get this mixed up, and then it will have to go in the fridge for a bit before we bake it. And we'll see how it comes out. Let's get started. All right, guys, so we're going to get started, and this recipe does call for uh, a stand mixer. But as I always say, if you don't have a stand mixer and you don't have an electric mixer, you can always use a spoon. I used a spoon to uh, do my baking for years before I got a stand mixer. And actually, every now and then, I'll still decide I don't want to haul out this guy because it's pretty heavy, and I'll just use a spoon still. This, it just makes it easier and probably a little bit quicker. So to start out, we're gonna put in our butter, which is two full sticks of butter. And that alone says yum. And our sugar. So we have our white sugar, and this is 
three quarters of a cup plus one tablespoon. So just that extra little bit and our brown sugar, which is three quarters of a cup. So this is a half a cup. Come on. And this is a quarter of a cup. Okay. And now we're just going to mix this all up until we add the next ingredient. I started off very slow and I, I pushed it up so it's a little faster and that mixed for about two minutes next we are gonna add in our eggs vanilla and our lemon juice so we will start with the eggs we are using two eggs today and I will open this up and this is nice and fluffy right now it's perfect I'm waiting for the day that I get shells in here, guys. You know I live dangerously and crack right into my bowl. I've been awfully lucky so far. All right, two eggs. And it's one and a quarter teaspoons of vanilla. So, yeah, I'm gonna need my glasses for this. You know how I roll, blind as a bat. One teaspoon. And then we need one quarter teaspoon. Just a smaller one. There we go. Right. And to go along with that, we need a quarter of a teaspoon of and it states freshly squeezed lemon juice as opposed to the yellow bottle that we all have in our fridge yes me too i have that yellow bottle in my fridge <laughs> but uh, i picked up a lemon for this week so that i would have some fresh squeezed lemon juice so oh i squeezed way too much just a quarter of a teaspoon and this is such an interesting ingredient for cookies you guys i've never used it um like this. I mean, not if you're making lemon cookies, it's not interesting, but for chocolate chip cookies, it's interesting, right? All right, mix this well. All right, so we're going to grab a spoon and just scrape down the sides of the bowl right now so that in our next mix, everything is sure to get well incorporated. And actually the sides of the bowl don't look bad. There's not a lot up there. So I'm just gonna dip that in there. Okay, we'll hang on to this. And um, next up, we will be adding our dry ingredients. All right, so we're ready for our dry ingredients and I've pre-measured them. So we are gonna start with two and a quarter cups of flour. So here is my quarter cup. Here is one cup. And here is the second cup. Okay. Added to that is half a cup of oatmeal or rolled oats. Half of a cup. And lastly, in this bowl, I have one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one eighth teaspoon of cinnamon. We're gonna add all of that in and get this all mixed up. Looks good. All right, you saw me cutting the chocolate chips open preparing because that is the next addition. First, we are going to 
Uh, lift this up and scrape all the batter off. We're going to be moving to just using our spoon to stir in the last couple of ingredients here. And this dough looks super creamy. It smells good when I get a whiff of it. I can't smell the lemon at all. Or the cinnamon, actually. And I, I hardly even see the oatmeal. Everything is really well mixed. I'll give you a look right inside the bowl here when I pull it off. All right. So this is what the batter looks like. It is nice and creamy. So to this, we're gonna add our chocolate chips first. And this recipe takes quite a bit of chocolate chips, two and two thirds cups. I feel like that's a lot. Usually it's about a cup or so, I believe. So here is one cup. And that is one nice thing about the Nestle's two cups is that they sold it in this ginormous bag. This bag is bigger than your typical um, chocolate chip bag. This is, what is this? 20, I believe 24 ounces of chips. Yeah, this is 24 ounces. I may as well keep these on. My vision is not getting better as I look at this cup. Um, but this is a nice big bag of chips. So I only had to buy one bag. And that's a little heavy on the chips, but whatever. All right, so we're gonna add the chips and our nuts and get everything all together. Now, the walnuts required one and three quarters cup of chopped nuts, so I chopped them all up. I am using slightly less than one and three quarters cups. I am using about one and a half cups because I am gonna take out um, I don't know, maybe three or four scoops of cookie dough to make without nuts for me and Mason because neither of us um, like nuts in our food. But that is a personal preference. You could still take some cookies out and use the full amount of nuts. I'm sure it would be just fine. So, yeah, this is a lot of batter. <laughs> All right. Just starting to get it mixed up. This is what we're looking at. And we wanna get this well combined. Okay. And these are walnuts that are in here as opposed to, I don't know, pecans or something. This recipe wanted walnuts. Guys, I just said I was taking out some batter without the nuts because we don't like nuts in our food. And then immediately following, I just poured all the nuts in and started stirring. <laughs> Never mind, I'm not taking any batter out without nuts. <laughs> I screwed that one up. <laughs> but that's okay. This is how we learn. I obviously can't talk about it and be about it at the same time on this. <laughs> all right, all nut cookies. The good news is I won't eat so many because I will still eat a couple, even though I'm not a fan of the nuts, I will still eat some. Don't think I won't, <laughs> which is hilarious. All right, three. And this recipe is supposed to make just over two dozen cookies, like 26 cookies it says which, you know, may or may not be the case. We'll see. All right. So our batter is fully mixed up. Here you go. And this is the part, you notice I didn't mention my oven at all because it is not on yet. We need to divide this into 26 balls, it says. 
26 bulbs and um, put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour. And the reason that we put the dough into the refrigerator before baking is that so it doesn't spread as much and become this big ginormous cookie blob. The cooled, the chilled dough will keep it from spreading so much. So, but it didn't tell us how to do that. And it, the directions later say to throw it on some parchment paper and then put it on the baking pan. So I don't think they want it on a cold baking pan going into the oven. So what I have chosen to do is to make a couple of batches of 12 or 13 on some foil and then throw that into the refrigerator. Actually, maybe I will put the foil on a pan. That's it. I will put the foil on a baking pan, a different pan than I will put in the oven, and so it will not get all when I try and lift it up. All right. Let me grab a pan. All right, I have my baking pan prepared here. And again, this is not the one I'll be putting into the oven because it will be cold and I'm not going to put a cold pan in the oven. That's not what the recipe calls for. And I have my cookie scoop here. Now, be warned, I'm kind of spastic with the cookie scoop. I either get the dough in and I can't get it out or I get it sort of half out or I have to use a finger or a spoon to get it out. And more than likely I'll end up with just a spoon putting the dough onto the pan. But I'm gonna give it a good effort. I'm gonna try because there's something about a uniform cookie, right? Yeah, who am I kidding? All cookies taste good if they're good if they're good cookies. And mine never are uniform. They're always kind of free form. But we're gonna try it. Alright, so I have a fairly large or the largest one that I have scoop and a good healthy amount of dough and see i'm already having problems um i'm not concerned about spacing on this pan because it's going into the fridge we will be moving our scoops and properly spacing before we put it into the oven so don't worry about that all right and hopefully we'll be able to fit all the cookies on here because um, I only have so much room in my fridge. And that's another thing, another little hint is that before you go ahead and get your cookies laid out, make sure you make some space in your fridge for the pan. So I have emptied out one shelf in my fridge. And if we have too many cookies, that's gonna be too bad. <laughs> then some may just have to wait their turn for chilling. Chill my cookie. All right, here we go. Okay, hey, that worked out really well with my scooper. I will have you know that is my best scoopy experience I have ever had. <laughs> so no better time for it to actually work out, right? All right, so on my pan, I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Whoa. All right, I have 30 cookie dough balls here. The recipe said 26, so clearly they wanted me to have a bigger scooper, which, um, Oh well, I don't have that. So two things need to happen. I need to put these in the fridge and I also need to, this is how much dough I have left you guys. So it's not a ton. So I need to put this in the fridge and then I need to find a smaller pan to um, put the rest on, which I have. I just have to make sure I have room in the fridge for it and um, I will probably reduce the baking time or start as usual at the very lowest time because they were expecting a bigger cookie and that didn't happen. So let's see, let me grab a smaller pan. All right, oh. All right here's a super um, small pan. It looks probably a little larger on camera, but it's not. And I have some extra foil that I pulled off. All right, I'm going to place the bigger pan in the fridge right now. Don't go away. All 
All right. And I think I will be able to move man maneuver this smaller pan into my fridge. I have a little extra space on the shelf. So we'll get the rest of the scoops on here. And I have one really big pan for when I'm baking that should be able to handle all of the, all of the batter. So I'm not too worried about that. You could also bake in batches if you needed to. Now we just leave, uh, leave the extra dough balls in the fridge until you are ready to bake them as opposed to sitting them out on the counter to wait. Yeah, I'm gonna have quite a few on here also. Okay, so we got another three, six, nine, another 10 cookies. So all together we're gonna have 35 cookies so that's not bad, um, you know, what about nine more than they, than they asked for. So that's not too, too uh, awful. Um, and if, if you noticed, I scooped one, I scooped this one and I put it down and it was kind of like misformed, deformed, not correctly formed. And so I put it back into the scooper and kind of reformed it back in the bowl and got it out here. So um, this is what happens now. I put these in the fridge they have to stay in the refrigerator for at least an hour. So uh, in an hour to two hours, then we will come back, throw them in the oven, and hopefully end up with some delicious cookies. So, well, I was gonna tell you to go take a break, but for you, it's only gonna be less than a minute. I will take a break <laughs> and clean up the kitchen and get my ingredients put away, and I'll see you when we're ready to get them in the oven. Oops. Okay. So the cookies have been in the refrigerator for about an hour and um, just over an hour and a half. And the dough is nice and firm. So we're going to move them onto our actual baking sheet, which I have here and I've got a sheet of parchment paper on it um, to prevent sticking. And so we will move the dough over and get them into the oven. Now, I believe I had 35, um, 35 little dough balls here. So I'm not sure if I will be able to fit 35 um, cookies onto this sheet, but we can do it in a couple of batches if needed. That is no problem. And I'm only gonna put four across so they do have some room to spread because they're not gonna just stay in big old lumps. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to work in batches, but that's okay. That is totally normal. So, here we go. So I've got two, three, four, five. I've got 20 cookies on this sheet. So it'll take two, two rounds to get all of these baked. And I'm just going to move these over so I only have one sheet in the fridge just to save space. And these get baked. These are um, these go low and long, meaning it's a low temperature and for a longer amount of time than a typical cookie. We bake these at 300 degrees and my oven is already preheated for that. And they bake for 20 to 23 minutes. So um, it's a little longer in the oven, a little lower heat, but that's gonna be just fine. So I will pop these into the oven pop the extras back into the fridge so I can cook those when these come out. And um, yeah, we'll see how they come out. Back in a bit. All right, the timer just went off and they've been in the oven about 20, 21 minutes. Oh, oh boy, they smell good. And this is what they look like. So let's test and see how they feel. And now it says keep them 
they should cook until, sorry, they should cook until the edges are a little bit brown and the centers are still soft, which seems to be exactly what is happening here. So we're gonna go with this batch being done. We're gonna let them cool for a few minutes before we put them on wire racks to cool completely and get the second batch into the oven. But they smell really good and they haven't spread too much. So we'll be back. All right, so these have been cooling for about 10 minutes and we're gonna put them onto um, cooling racks here so we can get the next batch into the oven, which is sitting right here. I just took these out of the refrigerator. And what happens is when you take cookies out of the oven and you allow them to cool on the tray for a bit, they continue to cook a little bit. So when they feel a little soft in the middle, straight out of the oven, that's okay because as they sit on the pan for the first few minutes, they will continue to cook a little bit and then solidify. And these have done just that. And actually Mason came down and stole a cookie and, and a dough ball. And he ate both. And even though he is not a fan of the nuts, um, he ate all of both, which tells me that these are pretty darn good. And for people who like nuts, they are probably freaking awesome. All right. Let's bring our dough balls down and get these onto our baking tray. Okay, round two, into the oven. Okay, round two should be done cooking and ready to come out of the oven. Gosh, these smell good. So we're gonna let these cool for a few minutes and then we'll get them onto a cooling rack and that'll be that. Oh, kind of like in a Okay, so let me just apologize now while I get these cookies up onto the tray for anything you may hear, see, or otherwise with this while this is happening. If you look in the back there, yeah, there he is. But this is how we roll, this is real life. So these cookies have cooled now for several minutes and I am going to put them up onto the cooling rack to cool completely. Oh my, oh my. I may, I, I may need a disclaimer for all of this. <laughs> and a couple of these have spread out rather large. I don't know why, but that's okay. We'll just separate them and move on. All right, so now we just leave them to cool and we are done with the cookies. Okay, so I'm a liar. I know I said that I probably wouldn't eat these because they had nuts in them, but you guys, I tasted them. Okay, I tasted two of them so far and they are good. They are really good. And I don't know if it's because I chopped the nuts up really finely or because they're homemade from my kitchen or because I'm getting old and my taste is changing because I really I am telling you the truth when I tell you I do not like nuts in my food however 
I think I have to make an exception. These came out really good. They are delicious. The chocolate is chocolatey. They are crispy on the edges. They are softer in the middle. They are not too nutty. They are not too nutty. Ah! I know. But anyway, they're really good and, and I am pleasantly surprised because I was not expecting to like them for myself. And um, even Mason ate one. So I know they're not his favorite, but he enjoyed it. So thank you for coming along with me today on this Bake With Me. Thank you to April for getting me to cook something I didn't think I would like. And look, and here is my fruity water. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up button, the notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. And as usual, guys, the recipe will be in the description box below. And um, give them a try. I think it's worth your time. And I hope you enjoyed today. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.